Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, this is the final video uh, in the series of videos on the cystic fibrosis. Uh, in the previous video, I've told you about the uh, diagnosis of the cystic fibrosis and uh, one of the important tests that you can use for the diagnosis of the cystic fibrosis that is known as the sweat electrolytes in which you check the concentration of the chloride and the sodium ion in the sweat from the suspected individual. You can also go for the uh, genetic diagnosis of the cystic fibrosis and in the genetic uh, testing or in the genetic diagnosis of the CFTR, you are actually uh, focusing on identifying the specific genetic mutation by following the uh, recommendation of the ACMG and the ACOG panel. And what you do is that you collect your sample, you go for the PCR, which help you make multiple copies of the CFTR gene. You are going for the sequencing and once you have got the sequence of your uh, CFTR gene, you are going for the mutational analysis to check any mutation in the suspected individual and the mutation can help you uh, analyze the condition of the uh, suspected individual uh, if he or she uh, is a patient of the cystic fibrosis. You can also go for the prenatal testing and in the prenatal testing you are actually uh, testing the fetus for any mutation in the CFTR gene. Uh, you can also go for the carrier screening and the carrier screening can actually help you uh, identify what chances uh, uh, of what chances you have uh, to be uh, having an offspring uh, with the patient of the uh, cystic fibrosis. Now in this particular video, I want to focus on the uh, treatment uh, strategies that are available for the cystic fibrosis. Now there is currently no cure for the cystic fibrosis, uh, but it's possible to help control the symptoms, prevent or reduce the complication and make the condition easier to live with. That simply means that these medications, they are not the actual treatment. They cannot completely remove the uh, cystic fibrosis from one's body, but they can help you uh, have a good life with these medications. Now, when you talk about the patients of the cystic fibrosis, one of the major organ that is affected, that these are the lungs. And you can actually use different kinds of the medication uh, to sell to uh, help solve the problems in the lungs of the cystic fibrosis patients when you talk about the uh, lungs of the cystic fibrosis patients uh, there are frequent infections in the lung and uh, to treat those particular chest infections you can use the antibiotics and those antibiotics can help you prevent and treat the frequent chest infections in the cystic fibrosis patients uh, when you talk about the mucus that is present in the lungs, uh, in the normal individual, that mucus is very thin. But when you talk about the patients of the cystic fibrosis, that thin mucus is converted into a thick mucus because of the problem in the CFTR gene, because of the problem in the chloride ion channel. So that thin mucus is converted into the sticky mucus in the lungs. And you can actually use uh, medications to convert that sticky mucus into a thinner one because the sticky mucus is actually responsible for the symptoms that you see in the patients of the cystic fibrosis. Uh, you can use different kinds of the thinner. For example, uh, you can use the Dornase Alpha, you can use the Hypertonic Saline, and you can also use the uh, Manitol Dry Powder. When you talk about the patients of the cystic fibrosis, they have got problems in breathing. They usually have short breath. So these bronchodilators, they are actually used and these bronchodilators are actually relaxing the muscles in the lungs and they are responsible for widening the airways and once you have relaxed the muscles you have widened the airways that can help make breathing very easier for the patient of the cystic fibrosis some of the examples of the uh, bronchodilators that you can use uh, what is known as the uh, salbutamol uh, you can also use the epratropium and there can also be a theopylene so these are actually examples from the three classes of the bronchodilators that are normally used uh, you can also use the steroid medication to treat the nasal polyps, uh, which are actually the small growth inside the nose of the patients of the cystic fibrosis. It's also very important that people with the cystic fibrosis, uh, they are uh, up to date with all the routine vaccinations because this routine vaccination can actually help uh, prevent the frequent infections uh, that you see in the patients with the cystic fibrosis like you should have uh, vaccination for the flu jabs uh, once uh, you are old enough 
uh, as there are uh, digestive problems in the patient of the cystic fibrosis as well so you have to go for the uh, diet dietary and the nutritional advice as well because people with the cystic fibrosis uh, when they are going to get the right nutrition that is very vital for them uh, to develop normally and stopping them becoming frequently ill However, majority of the people with the cystic fibrosis, they cannot digest food and absorb nutrients by their own because of the problems in the digestive system. They should take help of a dietitian, which, uh, which will advise them, who will advise them on what they can do to help avoid malnutrition. And different kind of the strategies, they can be there. The dietitian can advise you uh, on taking the digestive enzyme capsules with all meals and snacks. Uh, to help with the digestion uh, because the patient with the cystic fibrosis they've got problems with the digestive enzymes so if you are taking the digestive enzyme capsule with all your meals and snacks that can actually help you the uh, in the process of the digestion and the number of the capsules that uh, you are going to need that depend on the food being uh, eaten and varies from person to person because the food habit of different individual they are different from each other now following a special balanced diet uh, that is uh, high in calories, fat and protein that can help the patient of the cystic fibrosis uh, getting uh, the right nutrition. Uh, you can you should also, uh, if the patients of the cystic fibrosis should also take the vitamins and the mineral supplements. Exercise is very important because exercise can help uh, keep the bones and joints healthy and it is recommended for everyone with the cystic fibrosis. Now, exercise is recommended for everyone, whether they are a patient of the cystic fibrosis or they are not patient of the cystic fibrosis, but it is very important for the patients of the cystic fibrosis. Uh, and any sport or exercise that is usually good, uh, but if you are not sure about a particular activity, uh, you can consult your physiotherapist for advice. Uh, the bones uh, of the patients of the cystic fibrosis, they are very weak, uh, they are very brittle because they cannot get enough vitamin D and calcium from their diet or from their supplements. So they can actually take these medicines which are known as the biphosphonates and these biphosphonates, they can actually help treat the weak and the brittle bones. Uh, insulin medication uh, uh, and a special diet may help someone with diabetes which is caused by the cystic fibrosis to control their blood sugar levels. Uh, constipation is one of the major problem uh, that you see in the patients of the cystic fibrosis. So uh, the patients of the cystic fibrosis they can use these stool softeners to prevent constipation or bowel obstruction. Now, one of the uh, a new strategy for the uh, treatment of the cystic fibrosis that is approved by the uh, Food and Drug U.S. Food and Drug Administration uh, back in 2019, uh, which is known as the uh, Trikafta. Uh, this Trikafta is actually a, a triple combination therapy, which is uh, available for the treatment of the patient with the most common uh, CFTR mutations. And this Trikafta uh, is a triple combination, so it contains three medicines. Uh, one is known as the Elaxa Kafter, the other one is known as the Iva Kafter, and then you have got this uh, uh, Teza Kafter. So the combination of these three drugs that is actually known as the Trikafta. Now this Trikafta is actually recommended for those individuals who have at least one F508 deletion mutation. That means that they have uh, a mutation at position number 508 in their uh, protein and the deletion is actually responsible for deleting a phenyl anine uh, which is normally present at position number 508 in the CFTR protein. Uh, why this is focused? Because in more than 70% of the cases uh, of the cystic fibrosis patient, you actually see this mutation. So the strike after is actually focusing uh, mostly on uh, treating uh, this kind of the mutation or dealing with this kind of the mutation. Now, when you talk about the uh, like uh, mechanism of action of these drugs, so these uh, uh, Alexa Kafter and these uh, Teza Kafter, they're actually the CFTR character. What I mean by that is that it increases the amount of the mature protein that reaches the cell surface by targeting the processing defect that causes the faulty protein to be degraded. So if there is this F508 deletion mutation, 
So the CFTR protein actually do not get mature. It do not get to the membranes of the cell. Therefore, the uh, distribution of the chloride ion that is badly affected. So when there is this mutation, uh, the protein that is actually get degraded by the ubiquitin proteasome system. So this Alexa cafter and this Stella cafter that can actually prevent that particular degradation and actually the proteins that can move to the uh, surface of the cell membrane. Now this IVA cafter that actually facilitate increased uh, chloride ion transport by potentiating the channel opening uh, probability or gating of the G5051D 50, uh, CFTR protein. What this means is that when you talk about this one, uh, that means there is uh, in this particular case, there is a deletion uh, of a glycine amino acid at position number 551 and when this deletion happens uh, the uh, opening of the channel that actually get compromised so the iva cafter can actually uh, help uh, the help in the uh, treat, help in treating this particular problem of the opening of the uh, chloride ion channel and once the problem that is solved you can actually have uh, you can actually open the chloride ion channels and you can uh, maintain a uh, homeostatic uh, concentration of the chloride ion in the cells or in the body so when you talk about the uh, genetic diseases, uh, the most important, uh, you can say, treatment strategy, uh, that is prevention. You cannot treat the cystic fibrosis, but you can uh, prevent the cystic fibrosis. So if you are a carrier, uh, so you should go for the carrier screening, uh, especially if you have a family history of the cystic fibrosis. And if you are a carrier, you should see a genetic counselor before trying to conceive and it can actually help you understand your risk of having a child with the cystic fibrosis. Now the genetic counselors that can also explain the uh, possible treatments, the preventive measures and the uh, reproductive options that are there if you are a carrier of the cystic fibrosis disease. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And in the next video, we'll be uh, discussing uh, another uh, genetic disease.